What a wonderful map. Good times. It's terrifying, isn't it? Hey up troops, it's a little ton here again with another video, and this time we're gonna be looking at Mozzie. So let's just address the elephant in the room early doors here. Yes, I've got a black eye. Don't worry, I wasn't attacked. It was from a football game on Sunday. Everything's fine. The beauty of Mozzie is that you can play him in a multitude of different ways. You can play a shallow roam, you can play a deep roam, you can even anchor on site with him to an extent. He's got two great guns, he's just an all-round great operator. Now apologies again just as we get going, I am still a bit ill, my voice does still sound a bit croaky, so I know it's probably a bit irritating, but we move on. Now as was requested, I went into a few quick play games, just to get a few clips of how I play Mozzie, and I'm going to stick them at the start of the video again, rather than talking to you for two minutes about how good Mozzie is. I'm going to put the clips at the beginning, we'll then look at the loadout, and we'll get into it as usual. That's enough of me waffling on, let's get stuck into it. So nothing actually happens in this clip. I just want to show you a little game sense thing. This is the round before what I'm going to show you. You'll see in a second the door on the right hand side just there is open at the bottom of the barricade. I remembered that and noticed this second time round. If somebody comes in basement on Villa, if they've done it once, they're probably going to do it again. So this clip isn't really relevant, but I just wanted to show that I noticed that the previous round. And that goes on to what we do next round. Five seconds. So this is the round where something actually happened relevant to Mozzie. You'll notice I've put the C4 in study. I've got a drone looking at study door. So it's a bit of a pre-place job that we talked about or will talk about later on, sorry. Um, I now go back to the uh, red stairs because I know that guy came downstairs in the previous round. So I'm just going to go prone on the stairs, which is an area that nobody ever looks at because they're always looking upstairs. And I just wait around and see if he comes in the basement again. There he is. It's an easy kill on the board straight away. Now I know at this point in time people are going to start to start looking at coming into study. So nip somewhere safe into bike storage here. Jump on the drone. Literal perfect timing as Finker walks in. And there's two kills straight off the bat. One using a mozzie drone and one using just a bit of game knowledge from the previous round. So here we're on Oregon. This is not quite as exciting as the as the one that went on on Villa. But we put a couple of pests on the, on the door there to, to a small tower. I hear there's a Cali outside. Now, she doesn't drone. Whether she doesn't drone because there's pests on the door, I don't know. But anyway, she comes in. This, this hiding spot here behind generator is great. That's the Cali dead. I don't know why she didn't drone. Like I say, I don't know if it's because there was a couple of pests there and she couldn't be bothered. I don't know what the answer is there. I did have a pre-play C4 for above in small tower, so I take that off the roof there. And we have a look at the scoreboard. It's a 3v2 see that the guys are fighting over at Big Tower, so I have a little wander over there. Go and hold the stairs on Big Tower, because I've seen the mutes looking above, so I'm guessing they're above. Now if I was good enough, and I wasn't old and bald, I would probably hit this shot, but we see the Maverick here. And just miss him. In a different life I might have hit that. So I'm guessing now I've made the decision that both of them are above in Attic. So I get on the drone that's over in small tower. I pre-placed this earlier in the round. The, um, the, the mutes just killed the Amari, so I know the last one left alive is the Maverick, who we know is on big tower stairs. I drive the, the drone all the way across the other side of the map. Now, if the mute dies here, I get off this drone immediately. Uh, but knowing that the mutes are sort of a bit of a buffer kind of thing. Um, and this is something you can do with, with Mozzie now. So if you see Maverick gets forced through the breach and is actually flushed out and gets shot from below. And that's because of the Mozzie drone pushing him that way. Uh, this clip isn't really uh, Mozzie gadget related. It's just to show you how good the Roni is when you uh, can hit a headshot. So I put the C4 under the, the chalet double window, which we're going to talk about later as well. Um, I know that they're, they're attacking fireplace. You've just seen that someone's gone down that side. I blew the C4 because I didn't hear anyone at library. We've got a uh, couple of shots in the finger there, but no real damage. So we'll go around and do a little uh, little flank. I do hear someone on main stairs there, but I think the sound was actually coming from Mez on the other side by the breach. We just see the person there on breach and just miss him slightly. So we go up the stairs and up the tad. Get the one kill there and then the second kill there, but... The Roni is an absolute headshot machine. That's not Mozzie related, you know, any operator can hit headshots with a 1.5, but that's just to show you that the Roni, if you can get your crosshair placement right, is an absolute machine. 
So let's get stuck into Mozzie's loadout then. Just a quick one. If you own this skin, don't wear it because it gets you killed so much more often because you're really, really obvious. Anyway, onto his loadout. I'll come onto the primary weapons in a second. Sidearm, you don't get much of a choice. You, you know, you're taking the SDP. And then in your terms of your secondary gadgets, you're going to take your C4 over the barbed wire 99 times out of 100 because it can benefit the way you play your drones, which we'll get onto later. But yeah, there's not much of a conversation to be had there. The interesting conversation is between the Commando and the Roni. The Commando is a really, really good gun in its own right, and it's almost worth taking for the reload animation alone. The Roni is a headshot machine with the 1.5. It's absolutely outrageous. It got um, nerfed recently, but it didn't really affect its use. It's still really, really strong. I can see an argument for using both guns, and I switch it up depending on what mood I'm in. If I'm using the Roni, I use a 1.5, a flash, and a vert. And if I'm on the commando, I obviously just play hollow, flash, and angled. I think the, the recoil of the commando doesn't really justify taking the vert, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, it's it's a it's a tough one. I, and I, if someone made a good argument to me, I, you can't really say they're wrong. They're both good guns in their own right. It just depends what mood you're in and what your play style is like. If your crosshair placement is good, get on the Roni. You'll be an absolute headshot machine. If you tend to sort of body shot a little bit more and you're not always clicking heads like me, that's why I sometimes use the commando, but there's no wrong answer here. It's a really strong loadout. So let's get started with Mozzie's basics then. As you can see what's in my hand at the minute is what's called the Pest Launcher. And from the Pest Launcher, Mozzie can fire up to three of these spider-looking pests. Now what these pests will do is when any enemy drone comes within range, the range being the area that you can see here now, in that range there, the drone will be taken over by the pest and it'll sort of almost sort of infiltrate the drone, and then Mozzie will be able to take over the drone as a defender. So if we use Sledge's drone here, and we start moving towards one of the drones, you'll see that one of these pests will jump and take control of the um, of Sledge's drone. That drone has now got a highlighted ring around it, and that drone now belongs to Mozzie. So now I can press cams, hop on, and you can see the first thing I'm on there is, is the drone. Now, as you can probably expect, it's quite weird as a defender to be on a drone. They're only normally for attackers, and this is why Mozzie is so good and so strong. It's essentially a default cam now that can be moved around and positioned wherever I want it to. One of the key things with Mozzie, as soon as you've got control with the drone, is to move it straight away. You know, don't just leave it in the hole there where Sledge is going to be able to see it. It's to get it off, go and put it in somewhere useful that you can uh, hide the drone, like behind the plant pot to watch main stairs or wherever it's going to be. But get it somewhere safe and make sure the drone can get information to impact the round. So as you can see, there was three pests that I've put down. That means that Mozzie can indeed have up to three drones. I'm just going to use Sledge's second drone here to drive into this other pest. As you can see there, that's now taking control of the second drone. If we go on cams, all you've got to do is flick between the two drones. There's one, there's the other. So you can have up to three drones within your camera list. As you see down in the bottom left corner, you've got all the default cams. Then we've just flicked over to the drone cams. And that's how you control up to three drones there. Now, there's not really any footage for what I'm about to tell you, so we're just going to have to stare at Sledge for a little while whilst we discuss it. In my opinion, it's quite controversial, but if you see a drone in the prep phase as Mozzie, you should shoot the drone, not capture the drone. And what I mean by that is if you can destroy two, three, or four, or even five drones in the prep phase, and then put your pests down on top of that, so where the action phase drones, the second drones of the attackers are going to try and get through the door. If we were to put a, you know, if someone wants to come through this uh, drone hole in the action phase, but we've already got another pest there, we've already destroyed the prep phase drone, and we're stopping the, the action phase drone then as well, if you know what I mean. I know it's tempting, and sometimes I will do it, because if you're going for a pre-play C4, it is good to have a prep phase drone. Uh, we'll come on to that shortly. But in my opinion, you should shoot the, uh, shoot the prep phase drones, and then place your pests down to capture the second wave of drones that comes through. It just denies the enemy even more intel. And just a quick point of note here, unlike attackers, Mozzie can't pick the drone up. You know, if you're an attacker, you can come back over to your drone and hold your action or F button for me and pick your drone back up. That isn't possible with Mozzie. Once you've captured the drone, you can't pick it back up, run across the other side of the map and throw it. It's just on the floor and you can control it as a normal drone, but you can't pick it up. So what should you do with the drones once you've got control of them from the attackers then? For me, I always try and put my drones in influential places in the map, which will affect the round later on. So we're here on Villa. If we can get one top main up on this bookshelf here like this, you can see down to 90. You can see into a bit of study. You're going to see top main. You can see anyone going into the bar. There's nothing I enjoy more than a pre-play C4. So we know that, you know, number one is going to be an area of, uh, of high traffic. We run around. We pre-place the C4. That's not easy to say in a rush. Pre-place the C4. <laughs> You can see the pings there. You just watch the cam later on in the round from a safe space, obviously. 
and you can just use this drone to give information as soon as someone's in this area you know you blow the c4 it's literally a free kill. You, you can't go wrong with a pre-play C4. You've just got to make sure with the C4 that you put it in an area where someone's going to be. This area top main here is, is really busy as people start to push down to ball later in the round. But for me, I always like to put them in impactful places like this. And places where you can get the most intel and maybe even a free pre-placed or just a normal C4 anyway. Okay, so when it comes to the placement of the pests, there is a bit of an art to it. But first, let's, uh, let's do what we always do and shoot the radio so when it comes to the placement of a pest when it's on a single door it's fairly simple you can't really get it wrong although i say that i have seen people just put it in doorways like this and you don't want to be doing that because as soon as the attacker comes up the stairs or if the drone comes up the stairs i was going to try and go on a drone then but i'm mozzy when the drone comes up the stairs you can just see the pest there obviously you can shoot the pest if you put it behind the door this seems obvious now hello this seems obvious if you put it on the door here making sure the area of effect does go across all the way the door so you see that's not enough. So we want to go further over to the side here. That does now cover all of the door. But you still, what you've got to think about is, could an attacker shoot it from where they are? You can't quite see that there. But what would be a better place on this door is on the off angle that the attacker's not going to be facing. So as the attacker comes up white stairs, he's going to be able to peek this side of the door quite freely. What they aren't going to be able to do is look at this side of the door without exposing himself to the rest of the side. So just think about that when you're placing them on doorways. Single doors, as long as you put them this side of the door, and they're close enough that the, the area of effect goes across the other side, absolutely spot on. It'll get the drone every time it comes through. I've just pressed the pass button again, and I've no idea where that just went. There it is. Got it. The other side of things to think about... Um, is on double doors. Uh, I can't find a double door upstairs, so I'm just going to nip downstairs. Double d double doors are a bit trickier because you can't put that on one side and it won't cover the whole door. You can put one on both sides, but it's a bit of a waste of a pest. I try and avoid putting uh, pests on double doors if possible because the best way of doing it is by putting it on the floor there. And as we've just found out, it's so easy for the attackers to counter as they're approaching it. They can just destroy it on the way in. I missed the ping as well. How embarrassing. So yeah, double doors for me. You can do it. I don't like doing it. I don't think it's an efficient use of the pest. But you just remember that if you're on a double door, if a drone's coming around, they can get through this side and be unaffected by the pest. Double windows, on the other hand, there is a bit of a tip that, and a bit of a trick that you can do, which will mean that you can cover the double window. As we saw downstairs, the pest will cover the entire window, or will cover the entire double door slash window. So what you can do with double windows, if you punch the bottom of the window off, and you can place the pest underneath. The reason you don't want to be placing the pest on the barricade is because it'll just drop to the floor once the barricade's open. As you can see, it's down on the deck there when the client side debris disappears there. Whereas the one that we put on the wall is still firmly in place. So you can do that on any double window. Either shoot a couple of the panels out or just punch one of the panels at the bottom and place it in the middle of the double window. Any drone coming through there then will be snagged by Mr. Pest. In terms of going outside with mozzie drones, you now get a 10 second counter as you can see on the screen. If you're outside once that 10 second comes to an end, you're going to lose the drone. As we've already discussed, you can't pick the drones up with mozzie. You can't just run outside, pick it up and bring it back in. If you lose the signal outside, the drone's gone for the rest of the round. It'll just go off. You can still go on the drone. You can still listen to things, but you can't see anything on the drone. So just a quick random tip that you can do with Mozzie, which is pretty cool. You can see there's a claymore on the door there that Thatcher, thanks very much Thatcher, has very kindly put down. That Thatcher skin is a bit wild, isn't it? Um, that Thatcher has very kindly put down to the right hand side here. Now what you can do is you can actually block the lasers of the claymore with your Mozzie drone so it won't go off. If you park your Mozzie drone right up next to the uh, to the claymore, yes you'll lose your Mozzie drone because the 10 seconds where you're, it's been outside for will go. So you see it's about to go. So you've lost signal to your Mozzie drone, yes you'll lose that. But if you can block the lasers to the claymore like this, you're free to run out. You'll lose your drone, but you can run out then if there's someone on Master Balk. Or if there's a Thatcher just stood here, for example. With a wild skin on. Um, but yeah, you can you can block lasers. It's really useful for, like, running out of garage on Clubhouse or, or the one on Skyscraper where everybody runs out from. But if you still cross over between those lasers, it'll trigger the claymore. But you can, yeah, you can block the, the sort of trip lasers, trip wires on a claymore from going off completely with a mozzie drone. So from an attacker's perspective, there's two main counters to Mozzie, and they are Thatcher, who just disables the pest, and also IQ that can find the pests and, and shoot them off barricades or the sides of doors, uh, if they are there. Um, in my opinion, pretty much everyone can counter Mozzie with one sort of simple trick, especially when it's on an outside door, is if you get close to the door and you get the, the usual Mozzie pest warning icon that we can see now, if you sort of edge into the door and wait until the pest catches the drone, you still have control of the drone for like half a second or so. 
to be able to jump the drone back outside, which will then mean that the drone will lose signal. Mozzie, as we've seen, will have 10 seconds to get control of that drone and bring it back in. Or, obviously, you can shoot it within that 10 seconds. So let me just show you what I mean. So we go in until we get caught. And you can still jump back out despite the pest being captured. So you can still jump, even though the pest is through the motion of being captured. That mozzie will now have 10 seconds to bring this back inside. If not, we can just shoot it from the outside. The mozzie's really got to be on his toes to hear if he's caught a drone. It gets jumped outside. They've then got 10 seconds to drive it back in to still be able to use it without the attacker shooting it. I think that's the best way of countering when the, the drone, the, sorry, the pest is on the uh, a door that's external. This doesn't really directly counter Mozzie, but it does give you a heads up if the drone is yours or not. If you know that the drone, you can see the light on the front is blue. That means it's a, it's been hacked by a pest and you know it's Mozzie's. If you can't see the light on the front or if nobody's on the drone, you can always just ping the drone. And if the drone has been taken over by Mozzie, it will show up as red as an enemy drone. If it was one of your own drones, that would be blue. So if you're coming through here and you think, I, I don't think I've seen a, one of our drones that's here. And the, obviously the light's on so we can tell here. Let me just get Mozzie off the drone. There we go. Um, so if you're coming through and the light's not on, and you don't know if that's one of your drones or not, and you think, I haven't seen one of our drones here. Is that ours? All you've got to do is ping the drone. If it's one that Mozzie's got control of, the ping will be red. If it's one of the the ours, the attacking team, it'll be blue. An easy way of telling what the Mozzie drone is and get rid of it. So just to nip through some really good pre-placed drone spots to get easy C4 kills. On bank, we've got a drone top square here. I always put mine just on top of this railing, which is on the flower bed. Uh, sorry, adjacent, like this sort of plant type thing. And I look, I keep it looking slightly left, and also you can see down to archives from here as well. It rarely gets seen. You can see it there, but it's it's difficult to see. And what you can do from there is as well, you can see the double door for um, for top square there. It's just here. Looking at where the the, uh, the C4 has gone. Looking at the drone. As soon as anyone walks into top square door, you've got this poor Thatcher here who's just unaware. And as he walks in, you blow, you come off your drone, blow your C4, and it's just an easy kill. That, honestly, that works so many times, especially on a top floor attack. Unless anyone pushes electrical or from kitchen, they're not going to see that C4 underneath. And depending what elo you're in, it's almost guaranteed. So we're on to Chalet now. We've got a drone here and a, a really good spot for a pre-play spot. A uh, pre-play spot, a pre-play C4 here is up onto this bootcase, up just a little bit higher, and then onto the plant. And just keep an eye on the window here. So that the, the C4 place there is directly opposite the sorry adjacent the hatch down in games. The window's right here, sort of right above where this window is. Don't place your C4 right on the window because your reactions are not going to be quick enough to get it as soon as they come in. Just have it sort of a step or two away from the window, if you know what I mean. Um, not many people come into games at the start of a round when you're attacking top floor on Shelley. Um, so if they do, obviously you, you're going to get your C4 um, destroyed, but not many people do that. So if we just jump back, nip back onto the drone, we can see Thatcher's on his way through the windows. And as soon as he... Actually, let's look at the windows. As soon as he jumps in... I'm doing this both together, by the way, so I'm a bit slow. But you, <laughs> you see Thatcher's in now. We can see he's jumped in. So you hop off your drone. And that's an easy one as well. And most people run in through that window there rather than the one on the opposite side because it's not facing the little E-box there, the little small box. And most people are going to come through the double window, not the single window there. But you, can, if you think they're going to come through single window, put it on the other side instead. We're on to border now, and I cannot tell you the success rate of how often somebody jumps through this window on an attacking round upstairs. So we're going to get the drone, we're going to jump onto, we're gonna, eventually going to end up up here. So we want to jump onto the bootcase, then on top of the top of, on top of the top of the top of the barricade, what? Um, and then we're going to go up on top of here, just like this. You can see a bit into break room, you can see most of the security, but most importantly, you can see the window underneath you just here. And where you want to go for the C4 for that is downstairs in supply. And honestly, I, this works nine out of my, nine out of ten ranked games for me. And you, this is where the window is right here, but you want to place it just in front of the window, sort of like there. Get on your drone. And as you see, poor Thatcher, who's no idea what's underneath you, because no one goes in supply on the to begin an attacking round. It's going to jump in. As soon as you see him jump in, a step forward, a sort of step or two, you come off and blow your C4, and that's him done for. I can't stress to you how many times that works. Obviously, these all work with Valk as well. So there we have it, that's Mozzie. Like I said at the beginning of the video, he's a really, really solid all-round operator and someone who's really worth learning how to play properly.
I always say it at the end, but for those of you that don't know, I stream on Twitch four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's been a ton of people come over from YouTube, and I'm really grateful for that. If you haven't come over yet, come over and say hello from 8 p.m. UK time, four days a week. I'd love to see you over there as well. So that wraps us up for Mozzie. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.